Tonight on Q2, a long time coming. If you ask me uh, June 13th, you ask me at that point, would we be standing here today, four months later, having the conversation that we're having and seeing the repairs done that we're seeing, I would have said that was probably not feasible. The northeast entrance to Yellowstone will finally reopen to visitors. We get a sneak peek of repairs as local business owners patiently await the big day. Plus a brush with fame, or in this case, a moose. Was running down the, uh, I think mostly the sidewalk. I think he did a boy obey the uh, laws of the road and didn't get on the street too much, which was good. A new video shows Billings Bullwinkle coming stunningly close to a man as he sits on a bench. We'll have an update in tonight's Moose Chronicles. And I'm Casey Conlon. Coming up, we'll tell you how this hotel shuttle bus played a key role for a woman who is now the proud mom of a new baby boy. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. We begin with some breaking news. Three people were transported to the hospital, and Rimrock Road is closed for several blocks going west from Beth Drive. Lieutenant Brett Becker tells me a black Mazda was driving at a very high rate of speed west on Rimrock passing several cars before colliding with a vehicle that was backing into its driveway. Several people had to be extricated. At least one of the patients has very serious injuries, we're told. The investigation is ongoing and the crash team will be on the scene for several hours. It's a day many have eagerly been awaiting. Huge portions of Yellowstone National Park will once again be open to vehicle traffic as the northeast entrance near Cook City is set to reopen Saturday. MTN's Jackie Coffin got a tour of the rebuilding progress today, and here's what it means for park officials and local businesses alike. These road close signs at the northeast entrance of Yellowstone National Park are about to be a thing of the past. On Saturday, these roads will reopen to public vehicle traffic for the first time in four months. But Thursday morning, I get a look ahead. I'm about to hop in the car with Superintendent Cam Shawley for a look at the roads that went from wrecked to repaired. Looking up, the beauty of Yellowstone in the fall is on full display. But what park officials are eager to show off Thursday is what you see by looking down. I think if you asked me uh, June 13th, if you asked me at that point, would we be standing here today, four months later, having the conversation that we're having and seeing the repairs done that we're seeing, I would have said that was probably not feasible. Four months later to the day, construction crews are finishing up repairs that will once again allow vehicles to drive through the park from Cook City to Mammoth, West Yellowstone and beyond. I've never seen this level of coordination and collaboration in such a short amount of time getting so much done. The repairs have come at no small cost. Shawley says the Park Service has spent about $50 million and has brought in about 300,000 tons of material to repair these roads. As this entrance to the park gets set to reopen, businesses in the gateway communities of Silvergate and Cook City are closing. I am actually about 20 minutes from leaving Silvergate for the season. Um, but. You know, it, it's it's next season. It's we're opening back up November 18th to you know accommodate cross country skiers, snowshoers, and people who want to go see the wolves in the park after such a long time of no one getting into Lamar Valley. The only park road left open for regular vehicle traffic this winter will be from Gardner to Mammoth, and that's the last section of major road repair the park has to complete. Shawley says that will open November 1st. But for now, park officials and locals alike are celebrating the opening of the northeast entrance, putting the devastating flood behind them. In Yellowstone, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. The moose remains on the loose. It's now been four days since that bull moose was first spotted in the heart of Billings, and he doesn't seem to be in a hurry to leave. There have been numerous sightings and run-ins with the big beast since Monday, but for the first time, we're seeing surveillance video from a local nonprofit on Grand Avenue that shows the moose lounging behind and then charging past a man who was sitting on a bench. David Jay has the story. One of the latest sightings of the moose is right around here at 15th Street West and Avenue D. The irrigation ditch is about four or five blocks in that direction. That's where the moose has been camped out. A man was sitting right here on the bench and the moose came right through here between the post and the man. 
Security video at the Alliance Resource Center shows the moose at around 4 o'clock Monday afternoon. We had no idea we had a visitor on Monday. We actually had two. One was a nice gentleman sitting on our bench enjoying that beautiful day that we had Monday. The other was a probably a young moose. Workers came back on Tuesday after the holiday and spotted some blood before seeing the video. Our building manager was going to check and clean it up and led him to uh, be curious and he checked our security footage out. Sue Bailey, director of the center, says it appears the moose came down 15th Street West and made a right turn and headed down Avenue D. Comes up between these trees, just kind of does a roundabout here, a loop. He was going, he must have been going this way. He looped around this way. And then he went right through that space with that, with the bench and the light post. He fit right through there and continued down the sidewalk, we think, to about halfway through the parking lot. He headed out that way. He went right past our bus and down the sidewalk. And they do not recognize the man in the video, but say it was shocking to see how close those two got. I think he might have even gotten brushed by the moose. Bailey has looked at the surveillance footage and believes the moose has just a minor cut or scrape. He was trotting pretty well. He didn't look like he had a limp or anything like that. So we think he was probably all right. He probably scratched himself on a fence or a bush or something in his travels. It was kind of exciting to see it. Uh, it'll probably be a, the talk of the, the dining room tomorrow. But, uh, it, you know, it's always fun to live in Montana. You never know what you're going to see. In Billings, David J, MTN News. The final scheduled hearing of the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol once again captured the attention of the nation today, and it ended with a surprising development. As that hearing wrapped up this afternoon, the committee voted and unanimously approved a subpoena summoning former President Donald Trump to appear before the panel. Before that decision, the committee introduced new information from the Secret Service about the possibility of violence leading up to January 6th. Each committee member also spoke, summarizing their overall allegations that former President Trump was at the center of the attempt to overturn the 2020 election results. A former President Trump responded online saying he refuses to be intimidated, calling the committee a, quote, total bust. The government announced today that Social Security recipients will see the biggest bump in benefits in 40 years. The Social Security Administration says payments will be adjusted by 8.7% in 2023. That's an average of $140 per month. This issue directly impacts a lot of Montanans. According to U.S. Census data, one in five Montanans are over the age of 65, and that number is only expected to increase. That announcement comes at the same time the government reported that inflation grew at 8.2% on a year-over-year -year basis. With this extended period of fall weather, I don't know how the supplies of pumpkin spice are holding out, but there's no lack of beautiful pictures thanks to the fall colors. Sherry, thanks for sending this one in. Not only do we have the beautiful fall colors, if you look in the background, you can pick out the bear tooth and just a little bit of the snow that's up there. Sandy shared this picture from down into northern Wyoming. Plenty of sunshine and again, those brilliant colors reflecting off the water. And those aren't the only colors. We're also getting some beautiful sunsets. Thanks, Randy for this shot. This was around the Harleton area from last night. Here's how to send us pictures. You can use our free downloadable weather app. We'll also keep you updated on all the forecasts and the updates that happen to be coming around or email us weather at ktvq.com. If you don't believe in fate, maybe this next story will sway you. A lame deer woman is the mom of a healthy new baby boy after a sequence of events you have to hear to believe. Our Casey Conlon reports. One of these double tree shuttle buses gave maybe its most important ride of the year earlier this week when a woman staying at the hotel and attending an indigenous breastfeeding clinic went into labor. I woke up and I was like, oh no. And I went to the bathroom and then I was like, is my water breaking? It was news Misty Pipe really didn't want, at least not this week, during Montana's first ever indigenous breastfeeding counselor training course. I came up and I was like, okay, I have no early signs of labor. This is good. But you had a feeling. Yeah, I had that full moon. The moon was full early Monday morning, and sure enough, Pipe, 38 weeks pregnant, went into labor around 2.15 a.m. Her husband was back in Lame Deer taking care of their other six children, so she was all by herself. So I called the front desk. Do you guys just give rides to the airport? And then the guy's like, like where do you want to go at like 2.30 in the morning? 
besides the airport. And I was like, well, I was just wondering if I could catch a ride to the clinic. I was like, I think I'm in labor. And he's like, oh my God, yes, for sure, come down right now. Oh, catching a ride. The driver took Pipe to Billings Clinic to meet her trusted midwife, Chantel Blackwell. What happened next was an experience Pipe will never forget. She was like, you, you, you know your body, so you could do this. So when he started coming out, I reached down and I grabbed him out. And then I was like, I don't have no one to cut the cord. And she's like, you're going to cut your own cord. And I was like, oh my God, I've never cut my own cord. As if this story wasn't good enough, Hawk Shile Jr. was the first indigenous baby born on Indigenous People's Day at the clinic this year. It also happened to be Pipe and her husband's 12th anniversary. But all she could think about was getting back to the training course. I was like, well, if you guys discharge me, I could still make it. And then she's like, you need to quit it with that conference. She's like, you're not going to make that conference. She stayed at the hospital Monday, but both she and Hoke Shile were back Tuesday for the 45-hour week-long clinic, crucial to rural reservations. It's a system that has really neglected a lot of our indigenous families for decades and the result of that is extremely low breastfeeding rates. I successfully breastfed um, my six other children when a woman calls me at like three in the morning and is like I'm just gonna give them a bottle I'm just gonna do formula feeding and I'm just like no you got this you know you're gonna coach them through it and stuff and, and so it's really important to kind of um, call that back and bring it back into our community. It's not the only important thing she'll be bringing back. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. Organizers say breastfeeding is 10% less prevalent on reservations than the Montana state average. They're hoping to change that as Pipe and 32 others bring back the knowledge and certification to their own community. Kim and I are, are two of about 20 native lactation consultants in the U.S. and Canada. That's out of about 20,000 total to share that knowledge and support women um, that look like them, that believe, you know, the same um, cultural uh, perspectives of them, so that's really important too. I totally Once again, that training includes a 45-hour week-long course. Well, still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, thieves are becoming more daring by the day, it seems. We'll show you a one middle-of-the-day car break-in from right here in Billings in just a bit, but first... I'm Alina Howder. One Billings woman is alive today after Billings Clinic urged her to go get a mammogram. We'll share her story coming up.